Hello and welcome back to Naval Action Basics. So, you've learned how to fight AI ships in the open world and in missions, but you're looking for a little more excitement. Well, I have great news for you today because in case you didn't know, Naval Action is a PvP game. This is going to be a slightly longer tutorial, so please feel free to use the timestamps in the description below if you'd like to jump around the video. Now there's a few different areas or methods in which you can engage in PvP. You can go to patrol zones, which are in a different location each day and are represented by a mark on your map. You'll definitely run into players you can sink if you participate in a port battle, or if you sail around in the open world near a port battle. And then there's hunting or raiding. You can do this solo or in groups, depending on your playstyle or preference. In today's video, I'll specifically be going over the basics of PvP hunting. A lot of what I talk about today can be adapted if you're planning to hunt in a group with friends, but for now, let's assume you're by yourself and you want to go out to hunt other players. First, you gotta figure out where you want to go. There are layers to this, so bear with me as the final picture will make sense. You need to consider what nation you're in, because that will determine what regions are close by. So I'm currently in the Dutch nation, and as you can see, we have a lot of ports on the south end of the map as well as some in the middle of the map near Hispaniola, and also some ports on the south end of Florida. Okay, I know where my ports are, but now I need to determine where my target areas are, or where I think I'll find some enemy players. One obvious and easy location is national capitals and free ports. Free ports are represented by those that have the beige circle with the plus sign, like La Tortue or Tombado, National capitals can be found by hovering over a port and looking at the description. So the U.S. has Charleston, the Spanish have Havana, the British have Kingston, Port Royal, the Pirates have Mortimer Town, the Swedes have Christiansted, the Danes have Gustavia, the French have Fort Royal, and the Dutch have Willemstead. You'll tend to run into a lot of players at Freetowns because it's a common place people go to base raids out of and trade with other nations. National capitals will be places that you can find a lot of players because that's where everyone starts the game, and many players end up keeping their national capital as an outpost even once they have progressed far in the game. Those are two ways to identify good areas to hunt. Another is to look at how much tax enemy ports are pulling in. If you hover over a port and you see that they are collecting 200 to 400,000 in taxes, then you can almost certainly bet that you'll find some players moving around their trading, crafting, and using it as a base of operations. Once you've found a location you'd like to raid, you need to consider your own survival. Ask yourself, will you be in a position to have a stash of repairs nearby? This is where your launch point, or the outpost you're leaving from, comes into play. You need to choose a national port or a free port to use as your base of operations, and you need to have a plan to get repairs there. Just know that if you choose a free port, like La Tortue, and your plan is to purchase the repairs from the store, you may find yourself paying astronomical prices. People will take advantage of the fact that everyone wants to buy repairs in free ports, and they'll jack up the prices so that they get a good profit. So whenever possible, it's a good plan to supply your own by sailing them up on a trader or collecting some from a friend. Another factor to consider is probably one of the more interesting ones, and that is what ship to use. This is an important factor because if you get yourself into a bind, you want to know that the ship you're on has what it takes to pull you through this situation. To know what ship you want to bring, you need to think about what type of ships you'll be fighting. Are you looking to fight players in small, fast trading ships, medium frigates, or heavier ships, such as third rates? If you can answer that question, you'll have a good starting point. Although nothing is guaranteed because you never know what type of enemy you'll run across, you want to be prepared for a certain type of fighting. Those trading ships have different sailing profiles and could be fast, even when loaded down with cargo. Frigates will probably be a better match for you in firepower, and some of them can be pretty fast as well. Heavier enemies will have the firepower to overwhelm you if they get a good shot on your ship. Choosing your ship boils down to knowing what type of prey you're after and personal preference. As of October 2019, there definitely seems to be a few ships that players are using above the others. 
so I'll go into detail on a few of those. The Princeton Neufchatel is an excellent 6th rate hunter. It's small, fast, and can sail very well at multiple points of sail. This ship can be outfitted with 6 pound cannons or a combination of 18 and 24 pound carronades. So those are pretty heavy for a ship of this size. If frigates are more your style, the meta right now would be a Trincomalee. This ship has great firepower, sails well upwind, and is super easy to build. Because it's so prevalent, you can often find this ship for less than 250k at a national shipbuilding port. Another great frigate choice is an Endymion, though these ships are more rare because they require a permit to build. The Endymion is a great choice because it can equip 24 pound cannons on its main gun deck as opposed to the Trincomalee's 18 pounders. If you're planning on going out with a friend, a great choice would be for each of you to sail one of these two ships. As I said before, the Trincomalee sails well upwind, and to match that, the Endymion is slightly faster overall and can be better downwind or on a broad reach. So if you go out with both of these ships, you'll have virtually all of your points of sail covered, so you should be able to chase down anything you find. If you do choose to hunt in a frigate, you'll want to make sure the speed is at least above 14 knots. The easiest and cheapest way to do this is to try to get your hands on a fur fur trink or ND. Oftentimes, you can find a fur fur fast or very fast trink for sale relatively cheap in port. That's great because the next part can be expensive, and that's upgrades. You'll probably want to put some combination of copper plating, boven winds, and northern carpenters refits on your ship, and all of those can be fairly expensive, with each one ranging in price from 300 to 500k. If your aim is to hit something with a little more meat, a wasa is a good choice. This third rate has six bow chasers, which come in really handy, and if you make it fur fur with some speed upgrades on it, you can get the ship moving pretty fast for a ship of its size. A fur fur build would be good for hit and run maneuvers, but maybe a teak teak would be good for more of a slugfest where you're hitting other heavy ships. Choosing the wasa gives you a lot more firepower, so you may find trouble trying to attack smaller ships as they may be able to get away from you. Keep in mind that you need to plan your route around the wind and you need to plan your attack around the wind. If you find a player in a ship like a trader's brig or a normal frigate, you'll want to attack them slightly downwind of their present position. Ships like this need to sail with the wind in order to escape, so if you attack them downwind, you know the only chance they have escaping is to sail past you. This will allow you to shoot their sails as they pass by to slow them down. The opposite is true for ships like the Essex. This ship can sail better upwind, so in order to escape from you, that's the likely direction they'll sail. Knowing this, you would attack them from upwind. You can see this demonstrated on the diagram. Now let's head out there and see what we can find. I came across this snow in my trink. I think the only reason I was able to catch him was because he had another ship in his fleet slowing him down.
My tag wasn't perfect, so I had to make the first shots count and hit his sails. The snow is a really small target and kind of hard to hit in my Trincomalee. Now that I have his sails down, I can afford to be upwind of him and work on his hull. Anywhere he tries to run, I'll be on top of him.
This is a fight I recorded with a clanmate, Waldron. In this battle, I'm the faster ship, so my job is to work on the enemy's sails to slow him down. That way, Waldron can move in for the kill. Three, four. Five. Now in this fight, my clanmate Chaka and I tagged an enemy player that was too close to a friendly AI fleet. We ended up fighting two versus eight. If you want to see the results of that fight, follow the link in the description below. It's pretty crazy. That's all I have for you guys today. PvP and hunting is something that you will get better at with experience and practice, so now that you have a basic understanding of how to hunt other players, go out there and get fighting. Thank you and have a good day.